Hello, class, and welcome to 1905 New York City, apparently. Also, Video Games 101 by way of Let's Play with Brigands. For this Little Nemo NES walkthrough, I'm your instructor, Professor Brigands. I had to say that a little bit out of turn. But uh, let's enjoy the intro to one of my favorite games for the Nintendo Entertainment System in Little Nemo. Awesome hair. Purple hair. It's a zeppelin. Descends just outside his doorway. And, uh, I guess purple hair was the look in 1905. Hi, Nemo, I've come to invite you to Slumberland. See, I... This is before Stranger Danger 1905. Back when parents didn't think twice about a... Well, a colorfully dressed... Purple-haired stranger. Entering your child's room via Zeppelin. It's a different time. It was a simpler time. I like Nemo takes no issue with any of this. His main concern is just... Oh, the princess. She's probably a girl. I don't play with girls. He said she's not just a girl. Just to remind you once again, she's a princess. Cannot stress that enough. I love this line. I bet she's still a girl and then his response. Well, anyway. <laughs> just like, yeah, okay. It's like, really? I'm coming to this kid? Hat in hand, or strange hat on top of my head still. Again, stranger danger, Nemo. <laughs> it's just, it's playing out like every school assembly I ever attended back in grade school. It really does feel like we're just doing this skit for an audience of impressionable kids. Anyone smart enough give, to give me candy? Sure, I'll get in your va uh, Zeppelin. <laughs> as long as I don't have to kiss her. He's like, whoa. Alright. This guy's just sick of dealing with Nemo at this point. And together, he gave the child some candy and uh, abducted him and flew away very slowly into the night sky. The green, heavily polluted night sky for 1905, I have to say. But I digress. One of my favorite games for the NES. Decent amount of challenge. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10, which equates to biting down and throwing your controller. But we have plenty of tips to ensure that that will not be necessary. So let's run the intro. We have so much to say about this game. We'll see you on the other side. As we start a new game, let's take a look at the controls for Little Nemo the Dream Master. Movement with the D-pad, pause with start, we can revert back to Nemo when we're inside an animal. Yes, he heard me right. Uh, B is attack, A is jump, and we have some special commands for the final stage, but we're a ways off. Again, very creepy vibe from a, a lot of the adult characters in this game, whether they're animals or just... Strange purple haired people with zeppelins. I love the last line we get from this guy. Wait for it as he gives us some tips. By the way, my name is Flip. I love he says that. Takes the time to introduce himself, and we'll never see him again for the remainder of this game. But anyway, here's our first animal. Little uh, frog type. I don't know. Something. But let's get inside it. Drug it. Climb in its skin. As we take a look at the Briggs notes for Little Nemo first, know where the keys are in each stage. We'll be showing you that. Scroll out the enemies, as we do with every platformer. We'll show you some specific areas where it'll help you out. And of course, enjoy the soundtrack. We love the soundtrack in this game. We'll be talking quite a bit about it as we move forward. Pretty much every track in this game is just absolutely fantastic setting up the vibe of the levels and everything. Speaking of setting up vibes, let's go to Blaze for an overview on the items of Little Nemo. All right, not a lot of items to cover in Little Nemo the Dream Master, but let's talk about them. First, you have the keys. You need a finite number of these to beat every level. They're hidden usually all around the levels. Just uh, keep, keep watching to find out where the keys are that you need. Then we have the jar of health refills one health block. You have the medical kit, which refills your health in full. And then finally, the Nemo head token and extra life. And thank you very much, Blaze. So I think arguably this is my favorite Capcom NES title, which is quite acclaimed. 
when you consider all the Mega Man games. Sure, Mega Man 2 and 3 are certainly up there. I'd say I'd put them on equal ground with this game. It's just a fantastic platformer, the, the fact that you can, yes, drug and uh, inhabit the skins of animals, or just ride them. This seems a lot more wholesome. I don't know why the scale changed. We suddenly look so small, but it certainly adds a different element to the uh, the gameplay. Adds a lot to it. With the, uh, the different animals and their different abilities. So we can wall walk with the... Uh, we can almost die very early. And let's uh, abandon the skin here as we almost fall off the edge. Not sure where the center of gravity is. To get some health back there. But we're good on keys at this point. Let's just press forward. We're very close to the ending of this first stream here in the mushroom forest. Also jump on enemies with this particular uh, animal. Here's the final key. It moves very slow, but we get that extra jumping height and we can kind of Mario enemies by jumping on their heads. Even that music's great, that little outro bit there. Now we have these cut scenes in between every time. The mom lamenting that we're either sleeping or not sleeping. She never seems to be happy. She's never satisfied in a lot of ways. But uh, here we are, Dream 2, Flower Garden. We have another interaction with an interesting looking creature. Hi Nemo, this is the Magic Garden. My friend Oompy wants to meet you. Fine, we'll go meet Oompy under the water. It's not necessary, but just drop on down here. Normally that would probably be death, but in this case it's dream world in the flower garden, and physics don't necessarily apply. Thanks, Oompy. So just a little tip there. It's kind of nice, because it's not especially obvious where you should be going. And we get this uh, gorilla with spectacles, it looks like. I think the biggest life bar in the game out of all of the animals. Of course, it doesn't come already filled. And of course, once we uh, hit select, we lose the health that we gained from this animal. So, you know, don't go out of your way to make sure that you have more than three health by the time it's time to dismount. We'll jump through here. And then these kind of evil wishies as they come down, these little demon dandelions. They just, uh, once they get close enough to you, they will lock on and just go straight down at that point, so you can kind of tease them out of the way. Not really sure how we clear that. We're still very much... That would have clipped our head, I'm pretty sure, but I guess with the scale change, that's how we get through there. So we flap the wings of the bee with A. B has a finite amount of stamina, so you have to make sure that you uh, don't run out in an inopportune time, like over some spikes, which can be an instant death, or uh, over a pit or something like that, so be careful. And the bee can't swim, so once you get in water you'll have to uh, disengage. Just go to the right there, you can avoid that damage. There's another one of those enemies that I don't think appears for the entirety of the game. It's just always strange when you get these one-off enemies. I think I mentioned this in a recent class, but just, yeah, that one developer on the team, very passionate about it. Everybody else hated the evil tree stump, but they said, all right, you can put them in one spot in the game. Anyway, let's go to Fluff for our first Fluff fact about Little Nemo. Fluff? If you're interested in skipping ahead to one of the later levels in the game, Little Nemo features a secret state select option on the title screen. Simply press up, select, left, right, A, A, B, and the new option entitled Dream Select will appear below the start option. After moving the cursor to this option, pressing A will advance the level by one. So if you want to jump right to the eighth and final stage, press A seven times, then start. Good call, Fluff. Yeah, if you want to jump straight to a particular dream, if you just want to hear the music, perhaps this next one, which is one of my favorite video game pieces of all time. See, 
between dreams one and two, you want you wanted me to get out of bed. Now you're telling me to get back and make up your mind, mom. It's only dream three. Pace yourself. Yes, I can't think of too many better matched themes for their environments, their levels. It's just, I don't know, I don't want to gush on and on and on, but I, I really do love this soundtrack, and just something about this piece in particular, just, it builds this sense of wonder that, you know, you are in this kind of larger-than-life house of toys, and just, it's wonderment, that's the word for it. It's a very special theme, it's just a track-for-track track, very special theme, but get back to it here. You don't have to jump up on the actual blocks to get the items you'll notice. just need to kind of jump up and rub on around it. You will die if you get crushed between the, uh, and a block in the back of the train, so generally the safest place to be on the train is right about here. Just past the back of the second car, the middle car. Make sure you duck and or jump accordingly past those guys. Another pair of enemies you won't see too much more in this game. The, uh, the missiles, the torpedoes, what have you, the bombs that these little balloons drop is random. So, uh, just use that forward momentum. You have a little extra speed when you're running to the front of the train, so you can use that. Got a crushing, uh, there it is, yeah. That trope, the ceiling that crushes, just make sure you have enough time to react for that especially smaller area, which uh, which comes down a lot lower. In pretty good shape right now, though. Make sure you move up here, as that's an easy place to get stuck with a uh, spike in the skull. Very dark. I love the animation of the trees blowing in the wind. A clear night, stars twinkling. Very, very excellent memories playing this one in particular as a kid. And they give you more than enough keys to uh, to finish this one off, in case you miss some. It'd be nice if we could carry them on to the next dream, but yeah, they change the locks from each from dream to dream. So we're awake once again. Go back to bed. We're literally in our bed right now, Mom. I don't think our mom's a drinker. Maybe she's morphine, 1905. What was the drug of choice? I don't know. Night C. This is a very relaxing theme right here. Hey, Nemo, if you share your candy with the hermit crabs, they'll take you where you want to go. Good to know. Good tip. You'll notice that the interactions with the animals at the start of uh, each section gets shorter and shorter. Obviously we didn't have one at the House of Toys, but yeah. At the first they're giving you their name. Hey, my name's Flip and everything. And now, you know, at this point they're just giving us tips here and there. It's pretty bare. Alright, there's another tree guy. I misspoke. Rare recurring enemies. In this one, better said. There's a lot of unique enemies on this level in particular. There's the fish, which uh, strictly speaking is not necessary. Helps you get through the water a bit more easily, but... Uh... So we need to get this key, but we also need to backtrack a little bit and get something else in a an underwater cave. So let's just swim down here. We can take the fish if we want. Just riding this one, we get that perspective again. It's easier to get around in the water with the fish. And we're gonna go up at the fork here and go into what seems like a dead end. This is gonna take you to this other area here where we have an extra life, some health, but more importantly, we actually do need to come through here so we can get this key. Those shell creatures that uh, launch up. You got them here as well, coming up from the bottom. You'll find sometimes just certain areas you trigger 
certain enemies that you wouldn't see unless you kind of backtrack a little bit. It's kind of weird. In that regard, we have one more key down here. This might be the last one. This might just be a, a five key stage at the Night Sea. These flying fish. Let's see if we can work this out. And the enemies, yeah, that we can't uh, inhabit the skin of, we can at least temporarily freeze. Right, that was pretty clean, and there's our five keys. We're already halfway through this one. Not too shabby. Back half is quite a bit more difficult than the first half, though. What's gotten into you? I just think Mom is... Maybe she's dreaming. Is she hallucinating right now, having a... Morphine-induced hallucination or something. We were very clearly in a deep sleep right there. I don't know. I guess, is this our dog? Emo, I think we're in your house. He just disappears. I always picture John Candy in a dog suit for some reason. I don't know, maybe it's the, uh, the Mog from Spaceballs that I'm thinking of. But All right, note the track here. This is generally the most efficient to get all the keys. And as we work our way through the house, my least favorite stage, let's get another fluff fact. In the Japanese version of this game, Flip and the gorilla each have a cigar in their mouth. This of course went against Nintendo of America's codes of conduct, which developers had to abide by in the late 80s and throughout the 90s. As such, the North American and European versions of this game feature no cigars in-game, though the gorilla's lips are still curled as if he's holding a cigar in them. Despite the change, the gorilla can still be seen with a cigar in his mouth in the manual in these regions. Huh, interesting fact. Yeah, I guess Flip did have a cigar. And the, uh, the, the gorilla does have something going on with his, uh, his mouth. Now that you mention it. Ooh, burning through some health here. Might get our first... Oof, that was a gimme. I'm going to drop down here. I know there's some health. If we can hang on. Down at the bottom here. There we go. I think we have the first appearance of the... Well, not yet. We will see a new animal in this level. Which might be the final animal that we have yet to see, actually, now that I think about it. We've seen the bee. The uh, little lizard salamander type thing we're riding right now. The kind of frog creature. Hermit crab, obviously. The uh, groundhog, which I don't think we'll see again. That was a one-off. The gorilla, and we got the mouse coming up in this stage. That might be the last one we have yet to see. Yeah, I think this is the, the weakest track out of all of them. But uh, still not bad. Does make you feel like, you know, you're you're very small in a, in a big world. Which is kind of the vibe when our house has been supersized here. So we're going to fly up. Hopefully we have enough juice left in our wings to just make it there. There we go. So Nemo walks a little bit faster on foot than the bee does, but, you know, it's kind of nice to be able to get that initial, initial, uh, use of the wings. And it's just sort of, uh, how long you've been in the air when it comes to the bee. So, uh, it's not even necessarily a question of how many flaps of the wings have you done. So we drop down here to get another key. Pop up to the top left here. Make sure we're on the ground pretty much from the start so we can just have enough juice to get up here. And we're gonna go all the way to the right so that we can get the final animal, which we had yet to see. The mouse, which comes with a complimentary hammer for some reason. Am I missing something? Is there some, uh, some popular lore? It's very tricky to not get hit in that section because the mouse just by default has that suction ability that the uh, little lizard creature has, so yeah, those things will generally hit you. You can just 
whack these eyeballs. And then make your way forward. That is something out of a dream, these weird turtles just vomiting up eyeballs. I don't know. Based on the movie, right? Maybe that was in the movie, I don't remember. We're gonna try not to take out too much of the wall here, and if you do, it's okay, because... If possible, you just want to take out the bottom two bricks. Because I don't think we can actually make that jump now. But that's okay. We just need to take out... this here with our hammer. And then make sure we take out enough to, uh, to come back up here, because there's a bee down here. Hitbox is kind of tricky. Anything over to the right here? angry monkey on some dishes. Probably guarding some health or something, but we just want this bee. So we can get back up and get that final key. Almost. Let's see, are you guarding another key? Did they put them that close together? Alright. I forgot. Two keys in very close proximity. There you go, there's all seven keys. It's very easy to uh, miss that top left one that we dropped down when we were the, the bee to pick up before we became the mouse. That's one I always generally miss, but there's the seven. What does it take to get you to just, I don't know, share your morphine, Mom. Not condoning parents give children morphine. It's just to uh, liven up this class a little bit. Cloud Ruins, one of my favorite pieces of the soundtrack right here. At this point, we just have some guy saying in passing, like as he's literally walking by, he's like, oh, I think there's something up there, maybe check it out, I don't know. My name? Come on, F yourself. You need to know my name. Or Demon Wishies. The Demon Wishies are tricky in this one. But as we ascend into the clouds, let's go to Fluff for another Fluff fact about Little Nemo. Fluff? Little Nemo the Dream Master is based on the Japanese animated film Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland, which itself is based on the early 20th century comic strip Little Nemo from influential American cartoonist and animator Winsor McKay, who hand-drew some of the first animated films ever made and was a huge inspiration for artists like Walt Disney. Speaking of Disney, Japanese producer Yutaka Fujioka who was then the president of Tokyo Movie Shinsha, had dreams of making an animated film in Japan which could compete with Disney, and even featured the writing talents of Chris Columbus, who would go on to direct Home Alone, Mrs. Doubtfire, and a number of other 90s family film classics. The animated film entered production in 1982, and while it was released in Japan in 1989, it didn't see an American release until 1992. Interestingly enough, because the game was made in Japan as a tie-in with the movie, it was released in both Japan and America in 1990, a full two years before American audiences had any idea that the movie even existed. There you go. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't remember it being like a big release. I think I saw it on VHS. I think I always had it in my head. And there's sort of more of those characters. I think I always had it in my head when I was a kid that the game came out in the 80s. Or the kind of the early 80s before my time, but, and we, if we get out of the, uh, lizard, we can make that jump right there. So very important here is to scroll off the demon wishy before you start this, uh, scroll down, otherwise they'll be, uh, in sync with the speed which the screen is moving, so you'll have to avoid them with, you know, wherever they drop down, which can be a real hassle, so it's nice to make sure you have a nice empty screen before over to the right there. Just wait until it scrolls enough off to see where the next jump's gonna be. Not too bad though, all things considered. And they give us all the keys here right at the end as that uh, snail just marches to its death. But there's all six keys. Getting kind of lazy with the keys, but I guess with it being more of a, a linear, less exploring level, why not just put them all at the end? Why me? Do everyone else's kids sleep while I yell at them to sleep? I don't know. I don't know what she wants. 
I don't know what she wants. Hopefully mom will seek some, some care, but considering it's 1905, probably won't be good care. Won't be the kind that she truly needs. Shout out to my, uh, my brother, who uh, this was always his favorite piece in this game, Topsy Turvy. There's certainly a, uh, a melancholic quality to it. Always kind of made me wonder is that the frog was hiding in our little friend here. Always made me wonder uh, why is this house upside down? Is there a sad story behind it, perhaps? That's just me projecting based on the music. I don't know, but I'll certainly take the bee over most any other animal any day of the week because it gives us more access. Make sure you don't miss this first key. The worst thing in a level like this is to uh, miss that first key, or an early key, better said, and have to backtrack considerably. Make sure you grab this one as well. Now we're going to switch to the mouse. Another instance where we want to scroll these uh, demon wishies, demon dandelions accordingly. And <laughs> just like that, they already put in a brand new mouse. And they have just enough space on that platform so you can get uh, one of those demon demonic dandelions to scroll to the left so you have room to uh, do the hammering without worry there. I noticed some uh, dish monkeys over there on the left appeared when they were not there when we initially grabbed the uh, the key that was down there. It's interesting. Okay, I don't even think that we uh, needed the... that creature at this stage. I think we just could have stuck with our bee, but that's fine. Got some nice items down there if you need them. And then uh, up and to the left, there's a one-up. Up to the right, we have a key, but let's start to fluff for one more fluff fact about the music. We can't finish this class on Little Nemo without giving a mention to Capcom's music producer at the time on this game, Junko Tamiya. Track for track, this game features one of our favorite soundtracks of all time. And incidentally, we ranked it number one in our top ten soundtracks for the NES ranking video we did over at Let's Play with Brigands. Link in the description. Tamiya has a very impressive but brief credits list, including Bionic Commando, Final Fight, and of course, Little Nemo. Unfortunately, this was her final credit before she left video game composing to work in producing Japanese classical music and arranging music for live stage productions. Alright, thank you very much, Fluff. Alright, last key. A little tricky, just make sure you, uh, you have a full tank of gas there and you don't, uh, you don't make any more moves than you need to. Grab that key, get back on solid ground. And now, instead of hearing our mom complain one more time and guilt us about our sleeping habits, sleeping habits of, a, what, an eight-year-old, we get this nice cutscene with Princess Camille. Kind of just wanted Nemo to shout in her face, just scream at her, I'm not going to kiss you! Girls are gross! Her father, Morpheus, there you go. Kidnaped by the... <laughs> kidnaped. King of Nightmare Land. There he is posing for his DMV photo. Terrifying, actually. True to its name, that is very nightmarish. The Land of Bad Dreams. Yeah, I didn't know this was based on a comic initially. It was a good look, Fluff. I knew about the film. <laughs> yeah, that, it's, it's not good. It's not good, Nemo. Why we turn to you. We're going to give you this impractical, way too heavy to carry around and actually use scepter that shoots out beams of light, the morning star. Awesome weapon, but I feel like any other video game protagonist should be carrying it before Nemo. Because like he says, he's just a little boy. He, I can't fight the Nightmare King. Can we get like Super Joe or Lad from Bionic Commando? Even Uncle Scrooge. Just any other Capcom protagonist. I don't know how to use a morning star. I can barely sleep through the night. Who do you think I am? I was hoping there would be some insert, like, I think I'm Mega Man. Don't worry, this is the land of dreams. I'll just cast a spell on it. So that even a pant load like you, Nemo, can use it. Wow! 
I like this next cell right here. I love that. <laughs> ah. Now you can do it. Attack or give away candies. It's your call. Yeah, we won't need keys anymore. That's nice. They're very trusting in Nightmare Land, ironically. The most dangerous place is also the most trusting place. I guess all the Nightmare nightmare Kings, like, no one's gonna be stupid enough to break into his place. Alright. Gotta keep our promise to Princess Camille as we enter Nightmare Land in one of the best pieces in this game. So we take a look now at the, the Morning Star. Switch to it with select, and then just hold down B to charge it up. And the uh, the full charge versus the uh, barely any charge makes a big difference, so especially when we're dealing with bosses, so... Gary's going to talk about that once we finally face a boss. Yes, there are bosses in this game, and yes, you can make that jump, but just drop off right there. Not sure why you'd need another lizard at that point. Have to be quick with these uh, flames, which kind of form scary faces when you look at them. Yes, this is far and away the most difficult stage in the game. It's broken into three parts. Most difficult one's coming up after this first boss, but speaking of this first boss, let's finally go to Gary. It's Scary Gary's Boss Beaters! Alright, better late than never, the King Penguin. Prepare fully charged shots when the penguin lands, and then fire at the head. Just commit to one side or the other, and then uh, get that shot off. Kill the small penguins with normal swings, you don't have to charge up or anything for that, but make sure you stay on top of that, but uh, just have those powered up, charged attacks ready to go, and you'll take it down before you know it. Alright, thank you very much, Gary. Yeah, can't stress enough the importance of the fully charged, just commit to one side or the other. As Gary said, this first boss not too difficult. Just keep missing him. This would be a good one. Cute little mini penguins who I think we saw very similar versions of in at least one of the Mega Man games. Takes a few really good, well-placed, fully charged headshots. There we go. We'll celebrate. That's that's the shot I want to get right there. Might be the thumbnail, actually. I like that a lot. <laughs> the action shot. Still looks a little too big for Nemo. Too un unwieldy. Got a one-up down there. This is one of the hardest stretches. Well, this is certainly the hardest stretch in the game, but it's as uh, yeah. This is uh, not for the, the faint of heart here. Bit of a gauntlet we're about to go through. So we get our lizard friend. The key is to conserve as much health as possible as you're probably going to take some damage. You have to be very quick to not get hit by the flames right there. Unfortunately, we can't jump onto that platform and wall crawl it from the bottom. So we have to go all the way up here. Thankfully, we have the, uh, the speed this first time around. And if you can get through without taking a hit, you're in good shape so far. We're not out of the woods yet, now we gotta do the whole thing over again. But at a fraction of the speed. The jumps help, because uh, this creature is faster in the air. But uh, yeah, expect to take a little bit of damage here. There we go. Usually I get through with uh, just one health remaining at that spot, so... It was actually a pretty good run, just taking the one hit. That demonic dandelion chases after us off screen. This part not quite as difficult. What is kind of difficult is getting out of the uh, out of the water. Just... That first jump went very well, actually. <laughs> Hopefully, it all be like that. Sometimes it's it's just not obvious as to uh, there's a bee somewhere around here. Yeah, they have a delayed entrance. I like to make sure we get that shot off, and there's another one. Probably walked back just a little bit too far and triggered a new one. Just want a nice clean... Yeah, That's alright, we got health right here. Let's see, the one hit won't do, we need a better charge shot there. 
So yeah, you'd think it would just be about holding up and then tapping A or having some momentum as you're coming in, but I really don't know. Or, you know, coming down to up, kind of surfacing and maybe you get the jump off. I really don't know. It's my one blind spot for this game. There we go, fine. And of course we fall back in. Alright. The edge of this will uh, head to a more difficult boss, so let's send it back to Gary. Boss beaters! With the fire stingray. Stay in the middle and move left to right and jump to avoid the boss. He comes through very quickly. This will be a good test of your reflexes here. And then just fire the uh, fully charged shots at the stingray when he moves in slowly. And uh, just have one of those ready when he comes in. Get a few of these in. He doesn't take a lot of hits because he's so fast. But uh, yeah, take him down. Yeah, he might be more difficult than the, uh, the Nightmare King himself, actually. Some of it's luck. Fully charged shot and just it's really not time to get two of two decent shots since so we just commit to the one here. Very quick. Alright, gotta have the reaction speed for this guy. Note the uh the, the kickback. A lot of recoil on the, the morning star. And he's just coming. There we go. Wasn't a good position for him that time. Alright, get another good shot off here. There we go. Got him. One to go. As we head into the final stretch now. This part isn't quite as difficult, especially after that uh, last little stretch we had to make our way through. It's a bit annoying in the, the way that they make you do it. You have to go get one animal after another to get up this uh, cliff here. First we gotta go through these little, uh, dropping construction rigs which looked a lot more uh, in place in our, uh, our ginormous house rather than <laughs> In Nightmare Land, I don't know, they're doing some construction or something. So first we get the lizard. Then we get the khakis, if you get the reference, but no, then we get the, the bee up here. See how they do that? You have to use each animal's mechanic to advance just a little bit further. And finally, we have a tricky little spot. We'll just head underneath these uh, this time. No reason to go up and above. So get to this platform, rest, and then get to this platform. And you actually cannot uh, get up to the top with the B, so you have to take the mouse here. All the way to the top. You can see we just don't quite have enough stamina as the B to get to the top. I recommend sticking with the mouse here. Uh, we don't need him for climbing anymore, but there's gonna be some health to uh, max out our health on the next screen. And uh, being that the mouse has the, the five hit points, we can uh, use that as a little bit of cushioning as we make our way to the final stretch to the Nightmare King. So if we take a couple hits, we'll still be uh, at full health once we go back to Nemo. I think it's right over here. Here we go. And there's plenty of one-ups at this point. That's how you know we're about to hit the final boss here. Not sure if the lives beyond nine count, but uh, apparently mice can't swim. But anyway, all right, final boss, the Nightmare King as we climb up here. Let's go to Gary. Gary, take us home. Boss beaters. All right, the final boss, the Nightmare King. Stay at the back of the screen and then just jump over the highest beam that he fires out at you. Anticipate the blood projectiles, shoot those out, and then just kind of time your shots. You can get the weak shots on the bloods, just knock those out of the way, and then you can get the fully charged shots in when you know you have an opening. And just aim those fully charged shots at his head. He only takes a few really good shots to take him down. Good luck and congratulations, you've beaten Little Nemo the Dream Master. All right, good luck, Gary. 
And we're going for a dramatic finish here. Down to our last hit point. Get rid of his uh, plasma that he's coughing out. Just... It's another pandemic waiting to happen. Cover your mouth, Nightmare King. That's all I'm saying. That's a good hit right there. There we go. There's your... That might be the still right there, actually. That's a really nice shot. And now we enjoy a very nice outro here. Music's great. There's King Morpheus. Cash would be nice. Or, I guess, candy. Sorry, Nemo. Candy. Don't mention it. I was just keeping a promise to the princess. And they even shoehorn in a, a lesson for the kids. It's important to keep your promises. I think they say that later. I think it's Prince of Slumberland. I think we might have to kiss the, the princess in that case. <laughs> we can play together. She's got a good, like, foot on us. Every day. There you go. Picnics in the Lollipop Forest. We didn't fight our way through that level. I would have liked to check that out. The Taffy Swamp. It's budget and time constraints. Cut the Taffy Swamp in the Bubblegum Forest or whatever it was. Your land's wonderful and all, but it kept trying to kill me. Everything kept trying to kill me. And I don't know. You can only climb in the. You can only drug and climb in the skin of so many animals before you start to feel weird. My mother, I'd wake up early every morning. I don't know, take that morning star back with you. I don't think you need to keep any of your promises. I think everyone's gonna be doing stuff for you all of a sudden. <laughs> Camille, so bummed. Come back anytime, Nemo. Maybe hang out with Flip again. Bye. Oh, bye, Camille. I think she does give us a... <laughs> Love his shocked expression on his face. Still a much better kiss than we had in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, the class we did on that somewhat recently. Got the playlist link in the description. Check it out. All of our classes. So we fly back home on our Zeppelin. Or that creepy purple hair guy's Zeppelin. Just in time to wake up bright and early. It's a beautiful day. I'm gonna get a nice shot here. And the Little Nemo theme song one more time. But that's our time. Thank you so much for attending this class. Big thanks to all my TAs. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of this game. If you've uh, ever had trouble with it. If you saw the movie, better said. Or if you knew that it was based on a comic. Uh, more than that, uh, don't forget to leave a like on this video. It really does help us out. And most importantly, if you haven't already done so, please enroll in this class by subscribing. Just hit that subscribe button. It really does help us out. We really do appreciate it. We do one of these classes every single week. We would love to have you enrolled. But, uh, yeah, for myself and the rest of the Video Games 101 staff, we'll see you next week for next week's class in the same spot. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and comment on this video, and click subscribe if you haven't already, as this seriously helps me to keep making great content for you. And check the description of this video to see what song is playing right now. So I could